G'day, how are you? Welcome back to the Green and Gold Life. Today we're getting a bit of gypsum out on the garden to uh, help bust up the clay that's underneath. And we'll probably talk about the mechanics of how gypsum works on our soils. Alrighty, before you go race out and just put gypsum on anything, uh, you've got to find out what your soil profile is or your soil structure. So soil is normally composed of three things. Clay, silt and sand, among other things like uh, water, air, organic matter, or a combination thereof. So you need to determine the percentage of clay, sand or silt uh, in your soil. So what we can use is a aggregate stability test. Uh, we're not gonna go into that here today. Alrighty, so for myself, we've got highly reactive clay here. By highly reactive, I mean the clay absorbs a lot of water. So in the winter months, it'll get wet and saturated and it'll swell right up. And then when it dries out, it'll shrink and it'll be like the whacker day four of a test, mate. There'll be cracks running through it everywhere. So our house footings, for example, are to a depth of like 1200 mil, man. Like, yeah, pretty big stuff just to, just to handle the movement that the, that the soil goes through here. So the clay particle is a lot smaller in size when compared with sand. The clay is very adhesive. It'll stick to your boots. You'll be walking around in it and you'll grow an inch, man. Like, you, you, it's muggy, it'll stick to your shovel and like you, you, can, you can feel the suction effect when you stab your shovel into the ground and, and reef it out. You know, you've got uh, what's known as soil suction as well. So clay isn't a bad gardening medium at all. If I was to pick one, I would say I would prefer clay over sand, just for that, that better cation exchange capacity. Alrighty, so what is gypsum? Well, gypsum is calcium sulfate, or Ca2+. It's a cation that we introduce to the soil profile, relieving that, that, that tight nature of the, of the soil. Our soccer ball here represents the clay particle. The smaller balls represent other cations such as sodium, magnesium and potassium. When we add calcium sulphate, or better known as gypsum, to the soil profile, we saturate the soil profile with calcium. The calcium is then exchanged for the undesirable cations through a process called cation exchange. While the calcium cation is taken up by the clay particle, our undesirable cations such as sodium, magnesium and potassium are left to leach further into the soil profile all right, so we're gonna to need to continue this for a few years with a yearly application. What that's gonna do is that's just gonna allow more of those undesirable cations to, to push further down in the soil profile, help break up the clay. Alrighty, here's a classic example of some of the clay we have here in the Adelaide Hills. We can see how messy and gluggy and cohesive that is. Now, I'd say this is an improvement uh, on, what we've, on what we normally have. Uh, because I've already added gypsum to this a few years ago, but you can see how it compacts up really well when we uh, when we squeeze it like this. So there is a you know there is a test to determine how much clay content is just by doing this. You know you can how it ribbons out like that. It almost has that texture of play-doh sort of. You know it squishes out, and we can see that that ribboning out there. So it's quite cohesive, quite sticky. Um, and you'll see when I'm working this, it'll be stuck to my boots. It'll be everywhere. So like I said, it's not a bad growing medium. Uh, it's got good cation exchange capacity. can retain moisture, as we can see here. Um, and it hangs on to nutrients uh, pretty well. Um, you're probably not going to see it real well on camera. Focus. Here we go. Hey ho, here we go. We can't really see a particle size. Look, it's more fine than the fingerprints I've got in there at the moment, so you can see that the particle size is quite small. Classic example of clay right there. All right, let's go on the hunt for some sand. It's not quite sand, I mean, it's sandy loam. All right, here we are by my irrigation boxes. Um, this is, I mean, this is sandy loam. We can see here quite the difference in uh, in clay versus sand. So this is a sandy loam, it's not quite 100% beach sand like you might expect, but um, you know we can see you know, it's, it's the same moisture, it's had the same amount of rain, I mean it clumps up a bit but it's just going to break out when I, when I ribbon it up, just like that. So, uh, so low cohesive, it's a low cohesive soil nature, um, not really good at maintaining soil moisture either and, uh, and a lower negative charge. But again, we'll go into uh, cation exchange capacity in another video.
Alrighty, so I'm only going to take half loads of wheelbarrow today because the uh, the lawn is sopping wet and I don't want to make ruts in it. Alright. technique I like to use uh, when spreading this stuff, stuff out nice and thin. And you want to try and flick it across the deck, that way you try and you know, spread it out a bit and then you can work it in. Now grip, grip your shovel down here, up here, plant your foot, rotate and swing it through. Alrighty, worked up a bit of sweat raking in some of that uh, gypsum into my lawn, man. Just tried to get it into the canopy where it can be mostly uh, watered down and into the soil where I need it. Alright, so I'm going to spread a bit of my compost here in with the uh, in with the gypsum that I've just put in across the fruit trees. So this is this is excellent stuff, man. This has got um, like coffee grounds. Uh, you can see lots of eggshells there. The worms love eggshells because they use them as teeth to help grind up all the food scraps that are in the soil. So, uh, yes, smells good. Um, so, so this is just going to introduce a little bit more organic matter into my um, into my garden bed there because it's lacking a little bit of organic matter. Um, you know, it's, it's mostly that high marsh clay and a little bit of loam on top. So I want to try and give it a little bit more guts. Now, if you've got predominantly sand in your soil structure, organic matter and compost is an excellent way to help boost your CEC. Yes, we're going to get a bit of this down. Probably most of this today. Most of this bin. Hopefully there's a few wormies in there. I haven't seen any yet, which is a little bit strange. Get some wormies into my, uh, into me, into my garden bed and then I'll work that over. I'm not going to work it too hard because uh, you know the rain's going to going to wash it in and whatnot. So um, ideally, you'd like to rotary hoe this in, but because I'm doing it right by the fruit trees, I don't want to damage the root zone. So I'm just going to lightly rake it in and uh, and go from there. All right, let's load up. Alrighty, now we're gonna rake her in. Alrighty, there we go, all done. So uh, we've got our gypsum out, it's gonna help break down our clay. And uh, we've got some organic matter into the garden beds here to help boost our cation exchange and introduce a little bit of humus into uh, the clay that's sort of lacking a little bit of guts, I suppose. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and uh, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or uh, anything you might, would, would, might like me to cover. Um, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. It goes a long way to, uh, 
to help me out getting this thing off the ground. <laughs> Alrighty, it's starting to rain here, which is good. We'll sort of watering all of that stuff there. Alright, I'll chat you on. Uru.